Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Life Sciences Industry Executive Outlook at reInvent 2020. My name is Shez Partovi. I head up healthcare, life sciences, and genomics worldwide for AWS. And it's really my pleasure to present to you today. One of the things I want to start with is really for you, to share with you that we've had a life science practice at AWS for a number of years, and we have a mission, and our mission is to provide innovative solutions that help you transform the entire value chain, whether it's from lab to life, and to help more patients faster. So we see our mission is really obsessing over you so that you can focus on your mission of improving life for others. So in my role, I get a chance uh, to talk to a lot of customers, and I always ask them why they picked AWS. And in addition to mentioning the healthcare practice, healthcare life science practice that we have, where we really are helping accelerate innovation with uh, industry experts, I also hear that our heritage of excellence in, in our customer obsession and our heritage of machine learning excellence helps our customers power their customer centricity and to really realize the full potential of their data. And so at the end of the day, bottom line is, what I hear from organizations is that they pick AWS because they can count on growing with the most reliable cloud partner of the industry. Now, the industry challenges in life sciences are plentiful, certainly um, um, known to you, I'm sure, increasing cost with, uh, in, in order to bring uh, drugs to market the declining internal uh, rate of return on that, and, and both the promise and the challenge of value-based care. And then on top of that, add everything that you faced in 2020, um, whether your own employees couldn't come to work, had to stay home, your labs, your manufacturing sites, uh, not being able to have employees on site, uh, and your clinical trials uh, with respect to patients being able to come in for their regular exams or to get medications, uh, uh, to get their, um, their drug for the trial. These all were a whole new set of challenges for you in the industry in 2020, on top of an already complex and ever-evolving um, life science industry market. So what I want to do today is to share with you a few things, to share some of the broad signals that we've been getting from your colleagues, your organizations like you, around how we can help them through these times, as well as um, provide some insights up to other examples of organizations that actually have gone through this. So both sort of at a high framework level, but also specific examples so you can see what your uh, organizations in your industry are doing. So now one of the first things we hear a lot, and we've been hearing a lot, is really our customers have been asking us, how can we help them improve their operational effectiveness to bring about operational excellence? So that's one area. The second area that we often hear, and we've been hearing a lot, even in this, uh, with this um, pandemic in 2020, is how can we help life science companies improve their customer engagement, and particularly with virtualization going on? Now, as we engage customers and talk about these things, it becomes very quickly obvious that the path towards, excuse me, the path towards operational excellence and customer engagement is really through data liquidity. And we are seeing a lot of organizations ask us how to liquidate their data to be able to achieve operational excellence, to get the value from that data, to go from data to insights, and to be able to engage their customers in a whole new way. So let's start with data liquidity, because this is on the forefront of the minds of life science organizations. Now, like most, you likely have data sitting in all sorts of silos. Um, that are disconnected and unable to recognize value because of those disconnected silos, whether they're genomic type data, whether it's um, first party data of your own, whether it's uh, external uh, EHR and electronic health record data. At AWS, we have a number of data pipeline services that help you move that data into the cloud. And whether it's using uh, Firehose, Kinesis, or whether it's using industry standards like Fire, um, using AWS Fireworks, which is an open source tool available to you, allows you to move that data directly onto AWS to be able to take it to its next level to derive value from it. Now, in healthcare, in the life sciences, patient data is not always nice and discrete. A lot of times that data is actually in narratives, in discharge summaries, admission notes. And so another challenge faced by life science companies is how to actually build models based on these narratives. And, and at AWS, we've released a service called Amazon Comprehend Medical. And what that does is it actually is able to read the narrative and extract knowledge graph from those patient stories 
that have been either dictated or typed. And this allows you to build far more effective and sophisticated machine learning models because the data is in discrete form. It's sort of like, if you think back to when you were uh, re reading a book in high school and you'd highlight key words, but this is much more than just highlighting key words because you're actually understanding the relationship between here's a medication, that was the route that it was given, uh, that's the frequency and the dosage. All this is the power of uh, Amazon Comprehend Medical. Now, of course, many times when you're collaborating with healthcare systems or with each other in life sciences, you need to share data, but also strip out patient identifiers. And Amazon Comprehend Medical is also able to identify the protected health information components of a narrative, of a patient uh, note, and to be able to strip those out. It's sort of like redacting so that you can collaborate and work with other organizations without having to share patient data. Now, often, in addition to sort of collaborating at that level, you may also want to gain access to third-party data sets that are available globally. And AWS has a number of different mechanisms to enable you to gain access to information that's available in open data registries or using AWS Data Exchange, where you can actually browse to see different organizations that are publishing data to which you can subscribe. And so whether it's open data registries or whether it's uh, AWS Data Exchange, it allows you to round out between your discrete data that you might have brought in with Fire, with uh, data that you've, uh, knowledge graph that you build from Amazon Compaign Medical, whether it's de-identified or not, and then bring in third-party data sets. And then with all those data liquefied into a data lake, you can easily apply the sophisticated machine learning tools that are available from AWS, like Amazon SageMaker and GroundTruth, to be able to build insights on top of that data that leads to the operational excellence we talked about, or we will talk about shortly, and about uh, customer engagement. So this sort of summarizes at one go the set of tools that we've made available to you. But what we should do now is actually look at examples of actually using these tools. So let's begin with double-clicking on in, in the area of research and discovery. Now, UK Biobank is an organization based in UK that's really dedicated. Its aim is to improve diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of a whole series of illnesses by uh, really following half a million individuals in a de-identified manner, combine their genomic data, combined with their clinical data to provide an open data set so that researchers, bona fide researchers all the world can gain access. That third party data sets that we talked about, UK Biobank is one of those examples. And of course, DNA Nexus is one of the AWS partners that is supporting and actually hosting the data for UK Biobank. And this is about 15 petabytes of data that's being made available to researchers worldwide to be able to gain access through this open program. And in fact, AWS is leaning in not only by helping um, the platform supports the actual storage and and, uh, uh, and analysis of UK Biobank data. But even so, we've also recognized that there are potential countries in the world where their resources are not as deep. And so there's a whole um, credit program that AWS has pledged about one and a half million dollars to be able to support either early researchers, early in the career, or areas of the world where the resources are not as, as, as readily available to be able to use those credits to apply that towards the analytics of this open data program. In, in addition to the UK Biobank and DNX example, let's talk about Roche. Now Roche, um, their vision is that the future of healthcare is really personalized medicine. And they are working to deliver patient-centric, value-based, outcome-driven healthcare through the medications and medicines that they release. Now, on, on their, when they look at how they at Roche can deliver on this personalized medicine, their perspective and point of view is that it takes an immense depth of genomic and clinical data, high resolution, to be able to arrive at personalized medicine. And they've built an entire platform on AWS that pulls in uh, genomic data from, from foundation medicine and, and real-world data from Flatiron and, and combines it with multi-omic data from, from different sources and puts it all into one environment which they call the Meaningful Data at Scale, MDAS. And that data lake enables them to deliver on that promise of 
personalized and precision medicine. Now, you know, everyone talks about precision medicine. It's worth really going a little deeper. I want to tell you an example of what I really mean and what Roche has been doing. So, for example, there is a, partic a particular, now, bear with me here, a checkpoint inhibitor immunotherapy. Now, this is used for cancer. And it's hard to understand why only about 20 to 30% of people benefit from this particular immunotherapy. And there are these, so there are these people that are responders and there are these people that are non-responders. And Roche, in an attempt to identify and personalize, did a deep molecular profile in combining deep clinical data with deep genomic data on that particular immunotherapy. And what they uncovered is that in the non-responder group, there's a set of individuals that seem to have a particular gene upregulated. And so they asked the question, could it be that genetic upregulation, that gene upregulation is causing non-responding? And so they actually combined it with an antibody, that particular study they were doing is in, in a preclinical model, combined it with an antibody to prevent the gene upregulation and found the results improved anti-tumor activity. This is what it means to dive deep into the genomic and phenotype data in an environment that's at scale, that you can bring high resolution data. And, you, and, and the point here is that not only can this sort of deep data and insights help discover new medicines, but in this particular case, helped uncover a new combination that made a prior medicine that's already approved much more effective. So this is the kind of work that Roche is doing, and certainly we invite you to attend their own life science session to hear more about their work. I don't just take my word for it. Now, let's go ahead and talk about data liquidity in clinical uh, trials and clinical development. And for that, let's go to AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca has a Center for Genomic Research, which has implemented a company-wide genomic initiative that the goal is to bring genomic data to all aspects of clinical trials, to be able to provide the kind of insights we just saw that we give an example at Roche. Now, AstraZeneca has the bold ambition of analyzing up to 2 million genomic uh, uh, genomes, excuse me, by about 2026. And of that, about half a million of that is actually from their clinical trials. Now, they're running their genomic pipelines in AWS and have been able to achieve a tenfold reduction in cost by the optimizations that can be done on AWS on the genomic pipelines. And so they're using, because they're able to do it at scale, because they're able to reduce the cost, they can do it in a higher volume and then combine liquidating that data and combining it with uh, the clinical trials data, they really believe that, that, that this is the way in which you can create the types of targeted therapies needed to be able to have effective medicines that match to the condition uh, and provide uh, sort of the validated targets uh, for, for the pipelines and for the medicines that they're releasing. So those are two examples in two different areas, early research and development, as well as clinical trials, where data liquidity using some of the tools that we talked about, whether it's first-party data, whether it's combined with third-party data, built with machine learning models that help either with drug discovery or identifying drug companions, or helping really transform an entire organization to bring liquidity across the entire spectrum of all the clinical trials they're doing it. So now let's turn our attention to operational excellence and uh, give some examples of how using AWS, organizers have been able to improve operational effectiveness um, with tools from AWS. Now for that, again, we can look at the entire life science uh, value chain, but let's really double click in one particular area and start our discussion with uh, clinical development. And for that, let's look at an AWS partner, 4G Clinical. Now 4G Clinical is an organization that is driven by a single purpose, to bring crucial medicines to those who need them faster. And they've built a revolutionary randomization and trial supply management system on AWS. Now, randomization and trial supply management, short for RTSM, that's what I refer to it. But what that basically is, is a system that does three things. First, it does cohort management, which means it helps determine randomization, which individual gets the medication that's being studied, which individual gets a placebo. The second thing it does is it helps with drug dispensing, which is to make sure that the right patient gets the right dose. And the third thing an RTSM system does 
is to help with uh, site resupply. Basically, the flow of drug, uh, the supply chain of it from manufacturer to the depot, to the clinical site that's doing the trial. Now, what 4G Clinical does is leverage natural language processing, NLP, powered by AWS, to really transform an outdated process of how studies are started. What 4G does is reads and interprets the written RTSM specifications and then understands them using NLP and builds a deployable system in moments with the click of a button. And what that really means is that new studies can be built and deployed in just two to four weeks, whereas in the past, it might take two months or more. And this technology using NLP was incredibly valuable. In the past five months, you, you probably have heard of all the COVID trials that were starting in 4G Clinical was able to stand up dozens of COVID studies in the past five months with an average delivery timeline of three weeks from winning an award to go live and some as short as five days. This is an entire scale of operational excellence and efficiency unmatched before. And, and some of these, the most amazing part of this is that some of these COVID studies were subject to last minute changes and they were able to do changes in a matter of hours and days rather than traditionally where these systems would take weeks to months. So this is one example of basically bringing about operational excellence with a platform that's built on cloud technology from AWS. Now, let's switch and talk about excellence in a different context. Let's talk about manufacturing and supply chain. Now, in that example, I'm gonna switch gears and talk about Novartis. Novartis, we've announced a public collaboration together and Novartis, uses AWS in two specific spaces, one around digital manufacturing and the other around smart procurement for their supply chain. What Novartis' goal is to be able to reduce the factory footprint and gain real-time visibility into the manufacturing KPIs, to be able to have a universal view of manufacturing performance across the entire enterprise, across the world, no matter what geography, no matter what the local regulations are. And so that was built, that's a tool that was built on AWS, giving Novartis leadership complete visibility to the entire manufacturing KPI and helps them make much faster production decisions. The other tool that uh, Novartis and AWS ProServe built together is, was basically a, using machine learning solution to help Novartis significantly reduce the cost of supplies when it comes to purchasing from the labs and their factories. This was basically called a buying engine. It's an AI ML supported buying engine to optimize cost for their manufacturing sites across the world. So these are examples of tools that uh, Novartis was using. And of course, I invite you to dive deep with the Novartis session um, that you see there on their screen and actually hear their own story from them. One last example from manufacturing before I move on is with Merck. Now Merck, wanted to be able to accelerate regulatory assessment of life science manufacturing. And it's, it's an area that's incredibly difficult. They have a team that's dedicated to evaluating the thousands of requests that come in annually to determine the potential regulatory impact of those change requests. And so this is a, and given the fact that every region of the world has its own sort of uh, complex regulatory framework, you can imagine this is a fairly daunting task and takes a lot of time. And what Merck did with AWS built together a change assessment knowledge engine, which is short for CAKE, change assessment knowledge engine, which is literally a web interface allowing scientists to quickly and consistently evaluate a change proposal for potential regu regulatory impacts anywhere in the world. And, and this tool uses a global knowledge graph with machine learning technology, understanding knowledge from all the different regulatory frameworks across the world to help the Merck scientists make better decisions faster and to achieve ex operational excellence. In fact, they've been live in three sites and already seen some amazing results that has significantly reduced the non-value add activity for scientists. We've seen, they've seen a 90% re reduction in duration of change assessment. They've seen a 30 to 70% reduction in total effort to process a change. And so please, I, join, I invite you to join and, and look, listen to um, and, and watch um, the uh, session from Merck as well, where they dive deep into this uh, as well. And so what we've done now is talked about some examples of operational excellence in uh, clinical trials, as well as a few examples of how AW supports excellence in manufacturing and supply chain. And what I want to do now is turn to the last part of this presentation and talk about 
customer engagement and take you through two stories there of what customers are doing on AWS to really accelerate engaging customers um, even as we face a pandemic and some of the challenges thereof. Now, the first example for this, we're going to go ahead and dive into clinical development and talk about a company, Evidation. Now, Evidation, what they did is their founders sort of looked at healthcare and wondered, why, if we have so many different sensors tracking cars, why can we have individuals use everyday wearable sensors to self-stream data about themselves? And so their model is that it's important to meet customers, patients, subjects, wherever they are using the things that they have. And so they built a platform at AWS that allows everyday tech to be used to stream data using Amazon Kinesis Firehose and to bring this to bear in a central repository, which then helps serve a few things. So when the data is being, for now, first they have almost 4 million, more than 4 million individuals that are on their platform streaming data and providing this information. <clears throat> and what, what they do is they're able to match individuals and up to now, up to this point, they've matched over 900,000 individuals to clinical trials. And they have over 2 trillion data points that have been streamed from individuals from their everyday technology and wearables into their data lake, which is then used to match um, potential candidates for trials. And then individuals are notified of the opportunity to participate in the trial. And so I invite you to uh, uh, watch that session as well, where Evidation uh, will dive deep into this uh, and the work they're doing that accelerates customer engagement using AWS. The last thing I want to talk about is a platform, uh, is a customer of ours, Inspire, which has built a platform um, that has now 50 million users. And Inspire's mission is to accelerate life changing discoveries through our vital communities of connected patients. They basically want to bring individuals together because they believe that the data that these individuals can and the information they can provide helps provide a richer understanding of a myriad of conditions, particularly those that are in cancer, chronic, and rare conditions. And so the, the challenge they faced in engaging their 50 million, cust- uh, 50 million members was that after a while, there were basically a scale you have millions of posts and billions of words. So now you have a site with so much content. And at that scale, you begin to face a different problem, which is how do you actually find content that's relevant to an individual so that you can bring it to their attention? Now, when you reach this level of scale of content, a whole new set of challenges come up. And so what Inspire did is use Amazon SageMaker, AWS SageMaker, in June of 2020 and created a machine learning recommendation engine that actually looks through all the content, those millions of posts and those billions of words, and identifies the right content that's sort of the next best action for the member, and then used email to actually surface that up for the individuals and to be able to provide a more engaging content to those individuals based on all the um, information that was on their site from those 50 million um, uh, members. And already, just from June till now, they're seeing tremendous results. Uh, Here are some of the results from them. They've had a 281% increase in open rate of their emails, click-through rate of an increase of 914%, their conversion rate of 163% increase, and retention rate of 550% increase. And so you have to just, uh, these are increases. So this is the power of applying AWS machine learning to help next best action that engages customers at scale of 50 million individuals with billions of con- millions of content pieces. And I want to end with actually a quote from one of the members um, in, in this particular Inspire community, because it comes back to how we started this presentation today. And, and, the, and the, in this letter that they wrote to Inspire, which I'm going to read, is it, part of his quote, this individual said, quote, I've learned a lot from these emails in the past couple of weeks, and in fact, more than I've ever learned on any other site. I found new hope to stand up and take my life back into my own hands, and it wouldn't have been possible without these emails. When I started, I said, our mission is to obsess over your mission. We obsess over customers because we know you are obsessing over people, over patients, and you're trying to elevate the human condition. Emails like this make us feel really 
good as well in healthcare and life science practice at AWS because we feel like we're helping you to do what you do best, which is to elevate the human condition and care for people to do uh, better, release better drugs, to improve your efficiency so you can help more people. So thanks so much um, for uh, watching this presentation and joining me today. What I wanted to do is to outline for you how we at AWS are helping organizations liquidate their data, to derive insights from that data, to answer the call that you've asked us, which is how can we help you be operationally more effective to bring about operational excellence. We gave you some examples in clinical trials and in manufacturing. And also you've asked us to help you with your customer engagement strategies. And I highlighted some examples where AWS was leveraged to provide deeper engagement with members, customers, patients, individuals that you're working with. I invite you to explore other life science sessions throughout reInvent 2020. They're terrific and dive deeper into some of the topics we talked about today. And with that, I thank you very much. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great rest of your day. Bye now.